Okay. Senior instructor, master's candidate, ex-fireman, big fella, no compliance here. We'll look at some disruption. And then we're going to look at disruption protection. Within, maybe we'll do an attunement. I don't know how far we'll get. But I want to show you the disruption. There's a lot of martial arts techniques. You need to disrupt before you hit. Because a lot of the angles are stupid. If you want maximum power transfer, you need to hit at 90 degrees. Any physics will tell you that. But if you hit a certain angle and direction on a pressure point, you get a bigger bang for the bucks. So there must be something else afoot. So, uh, I think we sensei that. I've been hanging around with the Japanese folks too long. Several them. Okay, long five. So if I hit it completely wrong, this is strong. If I hit it angle and direction, then this goes weak. So you see, you disrupt and weaken before contact. So it has a bigger bang for the bucks. But if you hit, strong, strong, strong. You hit, that 10. How many? Uh, four. Four. That 10. Eight. Okay, we've got it now. <laughs> so if you see what happened, I hit it straight, it was a four. I hit it at a decent angle, a little bit harder, and it was an eight. But then I hit it again at a straight angle and it still hurt oh, because yeah. it was still disrupted. So what I'm saying is, God. you need to hit everything at 90 degrees if you can disrupt it before contact. If you can't, then you hit it at the angles that you get out the books and at the seminars to disrupt, disrupt, whatever. So this will be down. This is, this is your high block technique. You hit this bone. On wing five, in and down, disrupt before you strike, you get a bigger bang for the bucks. But if you can get a disruption going, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I forgot I got the dual thingy in the extra. That's what I wanted to test as well, we just did. A little tap now hits a lot more. And you shouldn't be hitting it with this as I did. That's user friendly, you should be hitting it with this bone. And you should be adding intent and vibration and lots more stuff. But this is user friendly on the squishy bit. Okay, so we can get disruption from hitting a pressure point in the right angle and direction without contact. Excellent. So let's disrupt some more stuff. So I can just go back and test in. So we're going to disrupt and there we go. You're going to end up with one big short one like this. We're swapping in there. Pancreas, disrupt, down. So the technique for that is to punch down. This rope goes in, folds up, and off you go. Bang! But if it doesn't disrupt and you hit that angle, it bounces off and you look like an idiot. So you want to disrupt and hit at 90 degrees. So you might want to do that. Or you might want to make a proper fist, which would disrupt anyway. You don't have to go around and send a silly angle. But that's an energy fist, which is on a different video. So let's try another one. So we got a thyroid. Go ahead and go. We need to protect the thyroid. And we go in. Thymus. There we go. We need to protect that immune system. You want that little fella cooking? Okay, let's try again. Spleen! There we go. <laughs> try another one. Okay, so we're just going to go into gallbladder. There we go. That's your arm. You <laughs> so you just step across using your other arm. So now, liver. And what do you have in liver? Kidney. <laughs> Kidneys. Okay, so these still just put to the drawer. If you don't have the angle to disrupt, you can do it. And it's all in the catter. Still hitting on the cat for your pressure points. So you're not always aiming at an organ, you can aim at a meridian, you can aim at a chakra. Um, there's one for the heart, we won't do that one. Uh, we can use the, uh, go straight again. So if we go, pineal gland. Uh, yeah, we'll do one more. 
Hawk number 31, an old favourite of mine. Well, the drink tips and it in and down. So, disruption, piece of cake. That's how weak we are. Now, you don't know what energy the bloke's got. If he does my cat, none of that's going to work. Once you get to about 9 and 10, carry 9 and 10, it ain't going to work. If you do an attunement, <coughs> ain't going to work. Do the Qigong sets, ain't going to work. Something that's crazy, and the right amount of food. If you combine foods, you'll get chi energy, won't work. If you're on drugs, won't work. So you don't know what the guy is. The only thing you can guarantee about this is it don't work on you. You don't get disrupted. You can't guarantee to do, disrupt an opponent because you don't know what he is. Unless he's one of your students and then you smile because you know exactly what you're doing. And don't get egotistical about that. You start messing about with your students and you think you're superhuman, you go down to the pub and get a good kick in. That's why these old grandmasters go into the cage with fit, well armed crazy cage fighters and get a kick in. It always tittles me out. Audacity. If I go in for a cage fight, I want somebody with the same injuries as me, the same weight, the same height, the same age. Then I'd use normal techniques because it'd be fun. But I know that you can have that little bit of extra resistance, which is all you can ask for, really. A little bit more speed, a little bit more stamina. All good. <coughs> I've killed him. Yeah, I'm, I'm now going <laughs> to fix the guy. Thank you very much. I shall fix him good.